All right, we are here with a 1v1 community cast. Uh, Corpo Russ sent us in a video here, and we're going to be going over it here today, where the Skaven versus the High Elves. Now, you can imagine how upsetting of a uh, matchup that is for me, me loving High Elves, but I'll let it slide for the uh, pretense of this video. So we have here in the back a Plague Clock Catapult that is supplied with uh, clan rats with spears kind of backing it up. Good choice there by Corbo. Uh, then three units of Poison Wim Globadiers. Uh, those are the anti-large variant, as we can see, armor piercing. Uh, armor themselves, though, which is pretty great. Then we also have a unit of rat ogres and more clan rat spears kind of helping out that mid back line there. Then we have a Gracier of Ruin on the mighty Bell of the Doom. Also, we are uh, dealing with some Plague Monks. Plague Monks? Plague Monk Sensor Bearers, but also some more Plague Monks, and then you guessed it, Plague Monks. And you can see how festering and disgusting those rat men are. Um, also, we have a little Vanguard deployment over here of some Gutter Runners with Poison. So, nice little army here by Corbo, um, pretty solid. Especially against a lot of uh, the armored units that we're going to see, as we can, as we know here with uh, plague monsters, they're anti-infantry. There are damage dealers, and we're going to see a lot of that with the high elves. Uh, but with the sensor bearers, we do have that AP mechanic as well as that a ruin coming in from the plague monks. So you have a lot of uh, utilities here in this army. You've got a lot of a really strong range component, uh, but against high elves, you do have to close that gap very quickly. As we can see, the plague clock, plague claw catapult. Let's say that five times fast is already starting to make short work of the Swordmasters of Hoeth. And the nice thing about Skaven is you, you can almost play a Dwarf's Turtle tactic with these Play Claw Catapults. It's going to force anyone, especially any of the Elf characters, to come your way. And we can see our High Elf here went with uh, three units of Swordmasters of Hoeth, one unit of White Lions of Trace, and then two units of Spears, then a midline, or backline for that matter, of four units of Archers, one uh, eagle claw bolt thrower two units of silver claw silver helms one with shields one without and then the mighty techless now um interesting that they went with a lot of sword masters here i probably would have gone with one or two but still i think it i think it plays as they say screaming bell uh, starting to uh bell of doom screaming bell why did i call it that <laughs> starting to edge up here do some uh, some tricksy action the elves starting to move in as well Trying to get a better uh, vantage point for that for some firing on that uh, Skaven army here. Oh, oh, oh! You do have to be careful with wind spells, though. Even though they did um, edit it so that you can uh, cast out however you want, you got to make sure you get the timing right. Corbo did still knock out a good chunk of uh, this uh, this unit's remaining forces and a good like you know about. 20 to 25 percent of this Swordmaster of Hoeth. So while that could have been even more devastating, it was still a pretty good shot, I'd say. The play called Catapult, taking advantage of the fact that these guys are kind of overlapped, doing a heavy hunk of damage coming in there. Um, but the High Elf backline is starting to open up um, on the Elves, or I'm sorry, the Skaven's front line. That's going to start being pretty devastating pretty fast. You do have to shut down those, um, uh-oh, you do have to shut down those uh, High Elf backlines real quick when you're fighting up against them. And, oh, look at that, look at that leap. Oh. Skaven flying all over the place. God, I love the I love the high elf cavalry charges now. Oof! Look at this dude. Just belly up to the to the sun. Look at that. Oh, my globes! That's what I assume they're screaming. I wouldn't know. I'm not a Skaven, thank God. But we got a net of Amatok coming down. Sensor bearers have engaged over here with these sword masters. Boom! That's going to do a hefty bit of damage to those Silver Helms, which are, again, not AP units. So they're up against these Plague Globardiers who are armored, and they do, their AP characteristic isn't substantial. So even though they're, they're a backline range unit, they still are going to be able to, quote-unquote, hold the line. We've got two uh, these two units of Swordmasters on this one unit of Plague Monks. we got another charge in here of more Silver Helms on the other left flank, but some rat ogres tying them up. Then a charge here of these uh, ooh, 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 plague monks as well, and these white lions and plague monks du duking it out. Chain lightning not doing the most damage. Fire convocation ripping up through this whole squad of uh, sensor bears. I'm sorry, not sensor bears, but po poison globadiers. Um, and then the other unit of uh, 
Silverhelm's disengaging. I'm going to slow this down a bit so we, can keep, so we can catch up here. Disengaging from that previous unit of Blows and Wind Globadiers and moving into the Plague Caw Catapults. Now, um, with those Skaven Spears, they are going to be able to support them pretty quickly. And then those Swordmasters that broke through this line of uh, Plague Monks is going to be meeting up with these here, uh, this here Clan Rat Slaves as well. Or Clan Rat with Spears. I'm loving the new sword, or the Swordmaster models, not the new ones, but look at that. Look how shiny that is. Oh, oh. There's gore everywhere. So this actually was recorded before the Blood of um, Blood for the Blood God patch came out. So it's cool to see that it's added in retrospect. But I did want to get to this side of the battlefield where we've got those gutter runners um, starting to make short work of these archers and harassing that back line. Like I said, we do have to shut down that back line or it is going to prove hell. Oh, why, why did it even speed up? Let's just slow it back down. Get this screaming bell charge into these spearmen. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, man. Oh, one after the other pointy helm flying into the air. See, I can say pointy helm because I'm a hell, high elf, too. Well, not really. Not even a little bit. Oh, just look at it mulching through. Now, so here's one of my favorite animations of this coming up. I'm actually going to go back to normal speed. And boom. There. <laughs> just add insult to injury. Now that I've plowed through your forces, let me just bulldoze them an extra time. Um... We do have some stalling here, though. You can see these Poisonman Globadiers are kind of hanging out. These Swordmasters hanging out. I think there's another unit. Uh, these two units have rallied. That's something you do have to really be a, pay attention to when you're playing with Skaven. Um, their army is built to flee and rally, flee and rally, flee and rally. Got a runner's uh, jumping up on Teclas here, trying to get some, uh, some gankage in. And oh! Right under those group of archers, knocking them down significantly from full strength at 68 down to 60. And I do love how they like stagger fire now. They don't shoot all in one kind of flow. They shoot up and um, straight, just like the medieval archers of old used to. And the uh, screaming bell is really, really, really effective uh, because it is, you know, considered. Oh, sorry. What did I do? Okay, that's what I did. Um, it is considered more or less a large chariot type unit. Um, so it does bulldoze through things pretty hefty, heavily. And Rat Ogres especially, for, for 800 points, you get a very strong unit that is a armor-piercing frenzy unit for 800 points. I'm mentioning the kin of a Crypt Horror, but even more effective, I would say, for this army. I feel like you need two or three uh, Rat Ogres to be truly effective when you're taking Skaven. So as we can see here, some Swordmasters of Hoeth chasing off these uh, clan rats, some Plague Monks cleaning up this uh, unit of spearmen, but we still do have a pretty strong contingent of elf archers in the back, and even though, ooh, that net of Amatox is not going to be good for those rat ogres, um, and even though they don't have AP, they're still going to do a lot of damage because they are extremely, extremely long range. But the play clock catapult is back online, shooting up into these, oh, into these elves here. Um, and as you can see, it's just taking out chunk after chunk, and it is affecting their leadership too, because that's, that is the mechanic of the play clock catapult. Eagle Hot Bolt Thrower letting loose on here. It being at, be, being large is going to need anti-large shots to really help deal some damage to that Screaming Bell. These Swordmasters are really kind of giving it to these Clan Rats, and it's surprising these Clan Rats are, are really holding the line, to be totally honest, against something that is... Oh! Oh! Just missed those uh, archers just by a little bit. Another, uh, what is this, uh, Doom? Uh, um, the thing with the, the crows. <laughs> Play Clock Catapult, though, is doing a lot of damage. He's moving these Poison Wind Globadiers up to really help uh, knock out some of the, those uh, ranged abilities of the High Elves. And you can see they're really starting to crumble here. Um, and the nice thing here, we're going to see it right there. Another shot where the Play Clock Catapult takes advantage of overlapping units. You have to be careful of that when you're fighting against any kind of skaven that brings cavalry because that will knock them apart pretty quickly. Gutter Runners back to work on Teclis, trying to bring the other brother down, arguably the uglier brother. Rat Ogres mulching through things as well. Look at him just kind of hobble. <laughs> this is the kind of guys that use their toilet seat and don't put it back down afterward. More Plague Monks coming in. Uh-oh. Maybe we can get a good perspective shot of this one. Oh, oh, oh! Archers bloodied and battered. Trying to flee from the mighty Rat Ogres. They're about to be used as toothpicks. 
I think as far as lords go, the Screaming Bell is one of the more stalwart ones, as far as just generic lords. Unless you take the Warlord on the uh, Hulking Rat Beast, I can't think of its name right now. But those things are pretty... Uh-oh. Oh. Pirate Convocation, which could have been devastating, not used as effectively here. Teclis is going in to snipe that, that back line, though. Lord Masters of Hoeth have uh, dealt with these clan rats for the most part. Oh. Some of the coolest units in the High Elf roster, both tabletop and in Total War Warhammer. Just a beautiful translation into the game, I think, guys. Um, but the High Elves have rallied a little bit. They are starting to pluck apart a lot of what's left of these Plague Monks, and they are miraculously holding the line. Usually scaving it pretty shattery at this point in the game. We do have Teclis having... Disrupted some of the play cock catapults. Corbo missing his uh, his uh, lightning there. <clears throat> Look at Teclis though. He's become a Skaven himself. Just fleeing and rallying. Fleeing and rallying. Right into him. Needless to say, things are going very well for the Skaven. Oh, I've got to, I got to watch this happen. Oh, ho, 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 ho. that was so much gore. Your troops have uncovered hidden foes. So, we do have uh, the last of the elves here. Really, for the most part, everything is either beaten to the point of submission or just barely hanging on. We do have this these final units here. The Screaming Bell is starting to launch even its own men around in true Skaven fashion. Look at just being gored apart. Al gored apart. Birthing the internet off of him. Is it? <laughs> the Skaven is starting to pick apart High Elves. Left and right. <laughs> God, it almost makes me want to cry. Go into more cinematic mode to watch. Oh, Bad Ogre just getting run over by Screaming Bells. I love the, the noise of Screaming Bell too. Like, bong, bong. That's the exact noise it makes. They, I just, they stole the sound from me. But Teclis surrounded on all sides. You can see from the battlefield, majority of it is fled, for the exception of that long pant, that long zoom. Holy crap! <laughs> of these elves, um, still firing at some plague monk sensor bearers, which are again surprisingly still alive. And uh, Teclis finally starting to break, which brings this fight to a raucous conclusion. Let's take a look at that uh, post battle screen though. Here, right. Also get a good layout of this land. Um, so again, we same kind of units we were talking about at the very beginning of the video. But we can see 158 kills in the Plague Clock Catapult. Damn. And we got from the Plague Monks a pretty astounding a, a, a performance here. 44, 41, 49, and 60 kills. And even 65 on the Sensor Bearers. Um, sensor Bearers, I feel, aren't overly effective in a matchup against high elves but i think they really got the job done um if i if i were if i had done this army i probably would have taken one or two less globadiers and maybe no globe runners and taken two or three units of uh rat ogres and maybe and actually probably the same amount of plague monks i like those plague monks in there uh but i i really like corbo's army here because it really got the job done because he had a good strong front line a strong midline and a strong back line because he had the skaven spears um, clan rat with spears to support it. I mean, 34 kills and clan rats with spears is, is nothing to shake a stick or poop, poop, poop a gun at or piss a hunting rifle, whatever the saying is. I don't know. I'm not good at axioms. But for our high elf player, Zoisa, Zoisa, uh, we've got 98 kills in these Sword Masters of Hoeth and 136. As to be expected, they were just blenders uh, mulching up the front line. 74 kills in these silver helms. I believe these are the silver helms that smashed into the Poison Wind Global Deers on the left flank. Um, and then. Uh, made short work of, I think it was this unit of the Poison Wing Glover Deers. But you can see too from the Archer back line, again, playing against High Elves, you do have to shut that back line down. You need some sort of skirmish unit that gets in that back line, puts pressure on it, makes them move more so than anything. I mean, a lot of players don't remember to turn their skirmish off, so you have to do something to disrupt that. So, but 53, 56, 40 kills, e even against Skaven, um, those are still pretty substantial numbers to, to get from f three pretty low cost, 435 gold units, you know? So you do, again, want to make sure you want to pressure that back line. But really awesome cast here. Thank you, Corporal Russ, for sending it on over. Um, if you guys do have any recordings you want to send, please send them on out to me. My email is on my uh, my page. I know I had a backlog from Total War Warhammer 1. 
I couldn't get to, but uh, I'm a lot better on it in Total War Warhammer 2. I think Corbo Russ is, this is the first one I've received from Total War Warhammer 2, so I wanted to get it up. Uh, thank you again, Corbo, for sending it in. But if you do have any submissions, please send them on through. But uh, thanks for watching here today, guys. Have a good one and take care.